and burned the city to the ground. The Nazis did. But there were those who survived and went into the woods. And there was a story about a 13-year-old kid, a little pipsqueak of a kid, 13 years old. He was the only one in his family who, I don't know how, somehow escaped. And he watched his whole family being killed. He, mother, father, sisters, brothers, grandmother, tortured and killed, hung from the balcony of their home by the Nazis. Horror that you could never imagine. What would happen here in this country if, God forbid, anything happened like that to you? You'd crack up, right? You'd need a shrink. You'd need, what, the flowers and the balloons? You need the balloons and therapy, lifetime therapy, government agents coming to help you. He ran into the woods and he joined the Russian partisan unit. He became such a ferocious fighter against Germans because all he wanted to do was kill them. That's all he wanted to do. He was wounded five times. And some of them were almost mortal wounds, this little kid. That at the end of the war, which he survived, he was granted, I think in the Russian military, it's called the Order of he the Heroism or the Hero of Badge or something like that. That even the great general, Marshal Zhukov, who had every medal known to mankind, said at the end of World War II, he said, you know, I have every medal except one, which is the Medal of Courage. Something along those lines. This little kid had that. And there's a whole museum dedicated to these fighters, somewhere in Israel, I believe, showing some of their helmets with holes in them. And stories and pictures, and there was a story about women, little women, four foot nine, who were flying planes against the Germans with the Russians in the Air Force. Little women who would you think could just make knishes and latkes. They became warriors. Who would have expected that, that there's such a fighting spirit? So what I'm saying to you is you have a fighting spirit in you if you come from an ancestry of any kind. Look at your ancestors. Let's say you're Irish. Let's forget the Jewish thing for a minute. You're telling me the Irish had it easy there in their history? You forget about the blight, the potato famine, how millions of Irish starved to death, which caused the exodus to America? How did the poor Irish survive with almost nothing, eating scraps? How about the Italians? How did they survive when they came here? a few generations ago, living on next to nothing, maybe eating a pear. A whole day they had a pear for dinner. How'd they do that? They didn't need the government to, to give them a, a psychiatrist and a balloon and a little therapy. You're tougher than you think you are. Toughen yourself because you're going to have to. Anyway, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. All right, let's go backwards a little bit on the Savage Nation. There's some news that you should know about. Over the weekend, Friday night, a Muslim with a machete, slashed the man's throat, 60-year-old man in a subway station, and he shouted, this is for Syria. Machete, Syria revenge stabbing in London, now treated as terror attack. They didn't have to go to Barack Obama or Jed Johnson to know what it was. Muslim stabs man in neck in London subway, screams, this is for Syria, as Hussein Obama wants to bring in more of these vermin. I put it on Facebook, and 150-some-odd thousand people have joined the conversation. Then over the weekend, something good happened. Huge victory for nationalists in France. Nationalists win huge victory in France. Borders language culture. While here, disorder, hashtags, and clutter is what reigns. I like that. Disorder, hashtags, and clutter. What will it take for Americans to kick out the socialists and Islamists in America? I ask. Marine Le Pen's National Front leads in first round of French regional elections. Now, I wonder why. I wonder why the nationalists are winning in France. Can anyone figure that out? Gee, I wonder wh what, what the heck would have caused that to happen in liberal France. Now, look, if it can happen in France, it can happen here. The problem is we don't have the nationalist party that I've called for, for the, in the last two books of mine. The conclusion of Government Zero is all about creating a third party, a nationalist party. It's a long haul, my friends. The closest thing we have to it is Donald Trump. He's a moderate nationalist. That's the closest thing we're going to come to saving this republic, in my opinion. Be here or be nowhere. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm here Blue Monday. Got to work, plan to sleep all deep. He'll come Tuesday. Studio once again. Once again, there's a little collapse. The old board operator, little old collapse on the Savage Nation. This is what you expect from a national talk show. A training ground. A training ground where we use training cups before we drink from a wine glass. Now, what I was going to play, which I requested before the show, was Attorney General Lynch in clip four. You want to try that again, my friend? See if you can get it to play or should we get a little filling over there? All right. Frozen up. Equipment does this. Savage Nation, 855-407-282. Let's go to callers. Lisa on line number seven. Let's see if we can have a failure here now. Lisa, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you. Michael, I'm calling to thank you because I enjoy listening to your show in the afternoon when I drive to work. I have to thank you for all the little bits of history that you put into your into your conversations. Uh, last week you were talking about Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the Delano family and what they did. And I think before that you were talking about Thomas Jefferson fighting the Barbary Pirates. And I, you know, I love, I love history and I can't believe this wasn't covered in my education at school. So whenever I come home from work, I look these things up, I research them, and I'm fascinated by the things that I'm able to pick up from your show, and I just wanted to thank you because you're enriching my education. And I well, am that's nice to hear, Lisa. Let me explain something. This is a product of a lifetime of learning, a lifetime of reading, and I have three higher degrees, but more than that, I'm a very curious man, and I read widely, and I think that unless we know our history, we're, we're not capable of understanding what we're living through. So that's why I try to bring it into the show, Lisa. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero for your edification on the Savage Nation. Whenever we have that clip ready, guys, it's like five minutes into the show. We're ready to play it. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. You're warmed up now. Fingers are nice, ready to go. Let's hear clip four. Now, obviously, this is a country that is based on free speech. But when it edges towards violence, when we see uh, the potential for someone t lift, lifting that mantle of anti-Muslim rhetoric, or, as we saw after 9-11, violence directed at individuals who may not even be Muslims, but may be perceived to be Muslims. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and they will suffer just as well, just as much. Uh, when we see that, we will take action. That is great. Our fearless attorney general on Friday threatened anyone who said one word that she didn't like. Little Madame Defarge there, handpicked by Al Sharpton. Well, since she wants to prosecute people who uh, have a potential of lifting that mantle of rhetoric uh, to violence, I'd like to play clip five for those of you listening to the show and ask yourself if you think this lifts the mantle uh, uh, from rhetoric to action in clip five. Go ahead now. I'm looking for 10,000 in the midst of the million. Million. 10,000 fearless men who say death is sweeter than to continue to live and bury our children while white folks give the killer hamburgers. So if the federal government will not intercede in our affairs, <coughs> then we must rise up yes, and sir. kill those yes, who kill us. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. My, my. And I haven't heard a word from a Barry or from Loretta or from Ja about actions predicated on violent talk. Now, we realize that we have freedom of speech, and we know you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. But here's a man who said things that I think went over the line. But then again, as you know, there's a double standard in Animal Farm. As you well know, if you read your Orwell, some animals are more equal than others. But if you haven't read your Orwell, then you don't know what I'm referring to. There's another little saying, those who do not know the history are condemned to repeat it. 
And since most Americans don't know history whatsoever, and they have no feelings to go with that, we're in real trouble. Thinking about why people can't identify with those who were slaughtered last week, it's because they have no empathy. You have an entire generation of millennials who have almost no empathy whatsoever. They've grown up on Adderall, dr other drugs, and iPhones. They feel nothing unless it's inside a little device in their hand. They don't even know it's real. So to them, the event in San Bernardino is not real. It's something that occurred somewhere else. It has no, they don't identify with it, in other words. There's no empathy. So there's no unity. When there's no unity or empathy, it's a, a nation of disconnected souls. But nevertheless, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. So after Loretta Lynch gave that speech on Friday saying that she's going to prosecute people who uh, say anything that she doesn't like, she modified it today in clip three. Would you play that now? Let's hear three. Well, what I will say is, is that, as of course, we prosecute deeds and not words, uh, but we always have a concern. All right, fine. Now she changed it see, to deeds, um, not words. All right. Deeds, not words, which I breathe a, a sigh of relief that she prosecutes only deeds, not words. That's nice to hear. Because on Friday, I was afraid she was going to send an army of um, government workers into all the bookstores in America, even into your home, to rip out certain pages of Government Zero. It might be rhetoric that she didn't like. I, I don't know. You never know what the government could do. Uh, they did have book burnings in previous fascist governments. And I realize liberals can't identify as fascists. But the fact of the matter is, I predicted this. Page 270 of Government Zero, I wrote this. They want to ban any speech critical of Islam. And I guarantee you Hussein in the White House is already drawing up plans to ban the criticism of, of Islam. It's in the book. I wrote the book months and months ago. They want to ban any speech critical of Islam. And I guarantee you Hussein in the White House is already drawing up plans to ban the criticism of Islam. And then on December 4th, 2015, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, handpicked by Al Sharpton, vows to prosecute any anyone who uses anti-Muslim speech that edges toward violence. Well, once again, I, Michael Savage, predicted it before it happened. And I asked, what does edges toward violence really mean? It's whatever they want it to mean, whatever they want to make it to mean. So when you see you don't have liberals in the White House, but something entirely different, that should alarm all of you liberals out there who think you have liberals running the country because you don't have liberals running the country. You have the opposite of liberals running the country. Let's take some calls. Petri on line one, KSFO. Go ahead, please. Michael, uh, please go easy on me because I, I feel like I've gotten soft a little bit. I, I want to ask if we should give Obama a little bit of credit for his speech from the Oval Office the other day, yesterday, because it did sound like he had a little bit of patriotism going on in there. And, and I may have been fooled. I don't know if his lies are so good that they... Okay, so what part of it, what part of the great man's speech did you find encouraging? He he just spoke in that sense of tr he, like he was trying to shed the layers of his hatred towards the opposition, and he was trying to speak that whole unity bit about bringing the nation together and forgetting about oh. differences. And really? even though I, I, let's try let's hear the great man's speech last night before he dashed off to the theater to give George Lucas an award with all of the other Hollywood idiots that he loves so much. Let's listen to clip number eight and see if that's inspiring from last we night. We cannot turn against one another by letting this fight be defined as a war between America and Islam. That, too, is what groups like ISIL want. ISIL does not speak for Islam. They are thugs and killers, part of a cult Whoa. of death. Wow. And they account for a tiny fraction of a more than a billion Muslims around the world, including millions of patriotic Muslim Americans who reject their hateful ideology. Okay, tiny fraction? Well, they've grown pretty big for a tiny fraction. It's not so much the number of them, but it's the growth rate, my friend. It's like a disease. See, Professor Obama should know as a great physician that we all have little infections in our body at all times that our body fights off. But when our immune system is not functioning properly, a little infection can grow into a bigger infection, bigger, 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 until it can threaten the entire body itself. As Dr. Obama should know, when you don't treat an infection that's growing, why, it can become like a flesh-eating bacteria. It starts out small. 
Even Juarez started small. 